The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Back so soon, Senor Alpha? And I never expected to make it. It's a pretty fast driving route. Oh, Grandpa, we only passed three people on the road, and they was walking. Well, they was a running. <laughs> now, look, son, this car's right in the prime of life, and you go to Preston like that, why, the first thing you know, she's going to fall apart and spill the gizzards all over the ground. You last it. That cow's in trouble. Oh, no, Senor Alpha, the cow, she's not in trouble. Well, what's that noise? Something's in trouble. Well, the noise is coming from the house. It's just... Sounds like something fierce is loose in there. Come on, Luke. <laughs> you don't want to start. <laughs> well, it's nothing but a gold doing trumpet. Well, sure enough. Well, what you think it was? Well, by the sound of it, I thought we was going to have bastards for supper tonight. <laughs> Look, where'd you get that darn fool thing? Well, I got it from Mr. Curtis, my music teacher. <laughs> Might be a new way of punishing him. <laughs> now, will you two stop being so darn silly? It's an honor. If little Luke learns to play the trumpet better than any of the other boys, he'll get in the school band. Ain't that wonderful? Yeah, if you like bad news. <laughs> Grandpa, that's no way to talk. I don't think you get the right idea about music. Now, music is supposed to be a comfort to the soul, you see. I told you, Kate. I told you they wouldn't like my trumpet. Now, don't you fret yourself. Well, if they won't let me practice, I'll never get in the band. Don't you pay them no mind. This little boy has got his heart set on getting in that school band, and nobody's going to stop him. He's going to practice on this trumpet till he learns to play it. Now, go ahead, little Luke. Play. Well, the trumpets that blow down the walls of Jericho. The people on the inside try to bust their way out. Total egg production. Pitiful, just pitiful. Well, the chickens are trying, but every time they get ready... Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> that boy's just blowing us right out of the egg business. <laughs> How's the milk in the day? Another dry room. <laughs> I tell you, this is a crisis, Luke. Cow ain't a given, the hens ain't a laid. If we don't stop that girl done trumpet playing, we might just as well get in the car and drive off to the poorhouse. Yeah, well, ain't no use steaming yourself up, Grandpa. Kate ain't gonna let us stop little Luke no how. What do you mean, Kate ain't gonna leave us stop little Luke no how? We're McCoy men, ain't we? Yeah. Well, there ain't never been a McCoy man that was bested by a female. And I ain't even let history change itself now. <laughs> you coming with me, Luke? Well, yeah, Grandpa, I'm with you, but Kate ain't... Just heartbreaking, Luke. Them poor dumb animals, they can't talk, but listen to the pitiful way they are suffering. Grandpa, I may be sleeping in the barn tonight, but I'm with you. We don't hear no more insulting remarks out of you. That's what it is. It's got to stop. Grandpa, if you take that trumpet away from him, you'll do that little boy a real big hurt. A pain that'll last him the rest of his life. Oh, I don't believe that. All right, Grandpa. But remember, if you take that trumpet away, you'll break his heart. Look, I'm his grandpa, ain't I? He's my own flesh and blood. Now, if his heart breaks, mine breaks along with it. Better rest yourself a spell now, little Luke. Let a little red drain out of your face. Okay, Grandpa. Now, listen, son. I never lied to you, have I? No, Grandpa. 
So I'll say to that time... I ain't talking about that. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer me true. I will, Grandpa. Now, wouldn't you rather be out playing games with the kids than in here blowing yourself inside out? I guess I would. Well, why in tarnation don't you do it? Because the kids won't let me play in their games. Well, I'm not good enough. Ain't good enough? Well, how about horseshoes? Can't nobody beat you that. I learned you that myself. The kids around here don't play horseshoes. Well, how about checkies? You got more trick moves than a hoochie coochie dancer. But here, the things you taught me are old folks' games. Old folks' games? Yeah, the kids around here play baseball and football. Well, you ought to be able to play baseball. I seen you flinging rocks at tin cans. You got a good arm. Well, that ain't all the baseball. You got to know how to catch it and hit at it, too. Uh, well, what about football? When they need an extra boy to fill out the team, they pick a girl and stand. <laughs> well, uh, how about the box fighting? I learned you the McCoy mule punch. Ain't nobody can beat you at that now, is <laughs> I know how to fight, Grandpa, but I don't know how to play. Well, now. I reckon me and Big Luke's been so good, done busy trying to scrape a living out of the soil. We ain't had time to learn you them society games. Well, that's why I'm trying to learn the trumpet. At least you start not even with the other kids. Mm. We failed you, boy, but it ain't too late to make it up to you. Leave that right there and you come with me. Play ball! We've been winding up for five minutes. Come on and throw the ball. I seen a game in West Wheeling once, and I'm doing the same darn thing that that pitcher done. <laughs> Not tape off of this one. And one. Oh, gee. Don't swing so hard, son. You screw yourself right in the ground. That's all right, little Luke. You just keep your eye on the ball. Maybe next time you'll miss it closer. <laughs> Throw me the ball, King. Uh, never mind. I forgot, you're a female. You better roll it. I'll throw it to you, Grandpa. <laughs> Done show off. <laughs> Babe, you sure had a mess of muscles in that puny little arm of yours. <laughs> yeah. In case you two forgot, the only thing we're trying to learn, little Luke, is baseball. <laughs> One and a half? Well, he's only a beginner. I want to give him a chance. <laughs> I better go back to the trumpet. I'll never learn to hit the ball. Oh, sure you will, little Luke. I'll show you. Pitch me one, Grandpa. Well, you ask for it now. <laughs> It's a god darn female game. Now, little Luke, remember what I told you. You call out a whole lot of secret numbers, but when you yell, let her fly, Grandpa heaves a melon at you, you catch it, and you hightail it for the goal line. Don't fret, little Luke. At least we can eat the ball. <laughs> Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> Don't you worry, little Luke. You're going to get in that school band, because we're all behind you. And you're going to love every dead blasted note that comes out of that infernal horn. No matter how pitiful it is. <laughs> now, leave a rip, boy. Now you get it pouring out of that trumpet like that and you'll get in that band. Now go on, take a whack at it. 
it. It's more like it. I said so, didn't I? Well, I heard you give the McCoy word in getting better. Well, it appears to me a boy ought to trust his grandpa without invoking the McCoy word on her. I guess I'm not really getting better. Couldn't get no worse now, could it? All right, little Luke. You practiced long enough. Well, the triumphs is to die. How are you expecting to get into being if you don't keep honking? Well, he ain't gonna learn nothing with you grinding him down to a knob. Come on, little Luke, I'll give you some chocolate milk and cookies so you'll have strength for tonight. That woman of yours is sure getting feisty these days. Yeah, well, I don't know, Grandpa, maybe Kate's right. You have been pressing the boy. You don't seem to be getting no better. Mm -hmm. I hate to admit it, but it's still a punishing sound. <laughs> Grandpa, I could make prettier music just snapping my suspenders. <laughs> Of all the things that little Luke can't do, he can't do trumpet playing, best of all. He's got to get in that band. Elsewise, he goes through life thinking he ain't as good as somebody else. Mm. Poor little fella. If we could just think of some way we could... Huh? What? I'm thinking. I got it. That music teacher here is Mr. Curtis. Yeah? He's a judge in the tryouts, ain't he? Well, yeah. Well, now... Appears to me, me and him's got to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Well, talk about what, Grandpa? Grandpa, if I'm going to get in that school band tonight, don't you think I better practice some more? You don't have to practice no more, eh, Todd? You're going to be choosed anyways. I am? The McCoy Wood. Oh, boy! Hey, Grandpa, what are you going to talk to that music teacher about? Well, you just never mind, but... <laughs> when I get through with him, he's going to be eating out of my hand. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> now, you look like a kindly sort of a man, Mr. Curtis. <laughs> I, I try to be. Yeah, well, just keep it chomping. <laughs> you had a soft sport in heart, too. <laughs> I guess I'm human. Yeah. Would you like to try a peach? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And you're a mm. kind man, too. Yeah. Mr. McCoy. Uh, now, just a minute, just a minute. You better suck on that peach of it's dribbling down your chin here. <laughs> now, here, let me put this on so that you don't get no peach stains on your suit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, Mr. McCoy. Now, you being an understanding man and having a soft spot in your heart and being a kind man, I guess you understand what I come over here to talk to you about? Well, I think I can guess what it is. What you want is for me to... Now, look, if you think that peach is good, you just sink your teeth into that pear. No, Mr. McCoy, I, I, I've got to judge your grandson just the same as all the others, purely on merit. You haven't tried the grapes yet. <laughs> I, I just to be fair and square. I get a watermelon out in the car. <laughs> Wait, I appreciate all this. And I understand how anxious you are for your grandson to get into the band. But he's not going to make it unless he's better than all the others in the tryouts tonight. Where? Well, that's where it's got to be. An honest man would have told me this before he ate up all my fruit. This <laughs> beautiful boy, keep going. You said I didn't have to practice no more. Look, practice makes perfect, little Luke, and it's our only hope. Luke said you went to see little Luke's teacher today, Grandpa. What do you have to say? Oh, me and him had a sort of a discouraging talk and vice versa. All us think there's something unnatural about a man ain't got no sneakness about him. What's the matter? Just looking at that lemon makes my mouth all funny and watery. Well, look the other way and keep... It does? Honest, Grandpa. I won't be able to play another note. <laughs> See? You can't, huh? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, and you don't have to practice no more today. But, Grandpa, you just told him practice might perfect. Well, I just decided everything is perfect. And I give you the McCoy word, he's going to win the tryout tonight, come a tootin' time. <laughs> That was very nice, Fatty. Very nice. 
Now we'll have the tryouts for the trumpet section. The boys showing the most aptitude will be selected for the band. The others, of course, will turn in their trumpets so that someone else can have a turn at trying this rather difficult instrument. Our first aspirant is Luke McCoy. You ain't got nothing to worry about now. As I said, it's a rather difficult instrument. <laughs> Next is Thomas Flusty. difficult instrument. <laughs> Next, we will hear from Roger Gordon. And now, Miss Charnis, Mr. Dubbin, and I will make our decisions in the next room and announce them to you in a few moments. In the meantime, if you want to step outside and get a little fresh air, stretch yourselves, go ahead. Well, I give you the McCoy word. You'd be better than anybody else. <laughs> More than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> but, Grandpa, that wasn't fair. Well, now, that's gratitude for you. Grandpa, how could you have done that to them poor little boys, ruining their chances? Well, I get it. to get even for little Luke. They won't leave him playing their teams. I won't let them play in his band. Grandpa, I'm ashamed of you. What for? I'm ashamed of you because you ain't got the decency to be ashamed of yourself. What is you two that's been a spouting off about how important it is to find a place for yourself to, to belong? Yes, but to do it honestly. Grandpa, don't you realize what you've done? Sure, I see what I've done. I proved to him he wasn't in theory. No, you didn't. You did just the exact opposite. You taught him the only way he can be on even terms with anybody is by cheating. And that's a fine lesson to teach a little boy. He won't have any confidence in himself for the rest of his life. And he'll owe it all to his loving grandpa. Pepini? Senor Grandpa, if you could read my mind, you would fire me. As for the trombones, come in. Oh, Mr. McCoy. Mr. Curtis and you others, I'm going to hate myself with every word I say, but I guess the less I say, the better. Them boys out there that was uh, slobbering in the trumpets and couldn't play was because I was sitting out in front of them sucking on a lemon. Mr. McCoy, I'm surprised at you. Well, after this afternoon, I'm not really. Well, I know I done wrong. I know what I was doing wrong when I was doing it. But sometimes you want to do something for someone else so bad that you just keep right on. Though you're ashamed of yourself, you just keep right on doing it just the same. I guess you know this means that your grandson can't be picked for the trumpet section. Well, he had no part in it at all. He's a mighty fine boy. In spite of having a grandpa like me, 
Miss McCoy, your grandson is a mighty fine boy. And he has a fine grandpa. You ailing, Mr. Curtis? <laughs> Mr. McCoy, Charles' character is molded by the teachings of his elders. And whether you know it or not, you've taught that boy something. A very important something. Knowing the difference between right and wrong and having the courage to do what's right. Hmm. I don't know as a folly. Your grandson has already turned in his trumpet. Well, I'll be. I reckon I might as well turn in these lemons then. <laughs> There's enough here for a couple of head colds and a, a dash of influenza. <laughs> And the uh, two boys selected for the trumpet section are Roger Gordon and Thomas Flusty. Poor little Luke. He's probably outside crying his eyes out. You ain't gonna believe this, but I ain't never gonna try to fix nothing again. And now I'm very happy to announce a special award for a most coveted position in our band. The bass drum will be played by Luke McCoy. Tonight. You sure did, Grandpa. <laughs> it's a mighty cruel punishment for just giving the McCoy word in vain. 